Welcome back to Arcade. I am Super Tommy, and this is a series on creating a breakout game in Phase 3 with Matter JS. Now, in the last part, we created a paddle, and we've now uh, created a method to attach a ball to a paddle, so that when you move it around, the ball moves with the paddle. Now, next here, we are going to implement launching the ball from the paddle. Now, in Breakout, just to recap from the end of last video, when you start in the middle, you shoot the ball directly up uh, based on where the paddle is. And then if you're on the left, it'll be a different angle. And if you're on the right, it'll be a different angle. So we're going to do the same thing. And we are going to launch the ball from the paddle. So we'll do the simple launch first and just simply send it up. Let's just make a launch method here. So, and if there is no ball, so let's just say you, for some reason, call the launch method on the paddle, but there's no ball attached, it will do nothing. This is a can launch a ball that it doesn't have. Now, if it does, what we're going to do is this that scene scale. We're just going to use the middle of the screen as the other point to work from. Um, well, actually, we're doing the simple one first, so let's just skip this. <laughs> we will have to use that. Okay, ball, I've just gone ahead of myself. Dot set velocity, uh, set velocity y. And let's just say minus 5. So minus 5 should be up. Go over here. So we're going to use the space key. Now we use the phaser. Uh, phaser keyboard cursor keys so that we can so which is the arrows uh, up left down and right as well as the space bar so this dot cursors dot space dot so we actually only want it for just down so we can do I don't think we can do just down here right no so we need to do phaser dot input dot keyboard dot just down and then we pass in the key, which is this. Const is space just down. I mean, I guess we can just call it space just down. OK. So now we, we said here, this, so just down is expecting a key, but space is a key or undefined. So we're saying with the exclamation mark that this is indeed a key and is not undefined. That gets rid of the type script error. Okay, so if space just down, then we want to launch the ball. So this dot paddle dot launch. Ta da! Now that is fairly slow. All right, look at that. So we need to no longer be controlling the balls. Why? It's not very fun. I mean, it's weird. So but after we launch the ball here, we're also going to go this dot ball. Undefined. So we no longer control the ball, we're uh, getting rid of control of the ball. So let's do it again. There you go. And dribble. So I think if we have it just right, yep. So matter jazz with the physics, uh, it handles that sort of complicated rounded corner collision, which is nice. Okay, so that is the very simple launching it straight up. Five seems a wee bit slow, doesn't it? Eight. That's better. What just happened there? Matter physics is also not perfect, but it is pretty good. Okay, so now let's go back to the case where if you're on the right side or the left side, we're going to launch it at an angle. And so this is where we want the center of the screen. And so you've seen this in the last video. We're going to do some object destructuring on the scale manager. So this dot scene. Oh, no, no. That, uh, okay. So this dot scale is the actual scale of the game object. This dot scene dot scale is the scale manager. Let's see here. Okay. And then so now we want x is going to be half width y is going to be half height, which is the center of the game right here. 
and what are we going to do here? We want to create a vector um, to the center of the screen. So, uh, so this is the center of the screen. Minus, is that right? So, we have to invert it. Let's see. So this is no, this is correct. This would be less. This would be more. I think. Let's just do it. Uh, this dot ball dot x, v y. This dot ball dot y. Okay. So we want to normalize it. Let's create a vector. New phaser dot math dot vector two vx v y. So we want to normalize it so that we can get just the direction. We don't really care about magnitude here, because uh, so when we're doing here, uh, this this x minus ball x and y minus ball y, we're gonna also have a magnitude because it's it's uh, like a specific distance from this point. We only care about direction, and then we can scale it to eight, and then we will set velocity to be vec x, vec y. vec y. Let's see if that's right. So this should be up. Great. Okay, I gotta recatch. Look at that. That's what we want. Just hit it. Okay. Refresh and reload. Okay, and from here it should go left. Alright. So there we go. So what we did here, we can actually make this better too. Just do this. So can better read it. We're creating a vector based on uh, where the ball is and the center of the screen, then we normalize the vector to get only the direction. Then we scale that vector to 8. We're moving it by 8 before. This make a good speed or magnitude for the uh, vector. So we do all that. Then we set the velocity to this vector. And there we go. The ball moves. So it's always going to be moving towards the center. Now you can make different um, versions of this as you want. This is a simple one. And we are going to leave it at that here. So that's pretty good. So now you see we're going to do it where the ball should not hit the bottom of the screen. So in breakout, when the ball falls to the bottom of the screen, it should reset itself. And when it resets itself, it's going to basically attach itself to the paddle. So let's go to game. And we are going to not go to game. We're going to go to main TS. If you remember from part one, we talked about how we're not going to want the bottom. So let's say false. And now if that happens, you should see that it's just going to go. There's no more bouncing. But it will go on forever. Uh, we don't want that. So instead, we need to check in update if the ball is less than some amount past the bottom of the screen. So we can actually delete this since we have our paddle class. So this ball. Uh, no, this ball. So let's make a class property for the ball. So private ball. This would be a phaser dot physics dot matter dot image. So this dot ball. And then this, this, this. Got some errors. What are there? Okay, this. Everything should be the same. There should go. Okay. So we are going to. So it doesn't matter where we check it, whether the top or the update. I don't think so. Let's just put it at the top. So if this dot ball dot y is greater than this dot scale dot height, let's just say if it passes 100 pixels past the bottom of the screen, we are going to stop doing things and then this dot paddle dot attach ball this dot ball it's basically resetting it let's say so let's try it Bloop. there we go and let's make sure this still works yep we can still fire the ball so that's good so let's see we are at roughly nine minutes now we can also keep track of lives as well, so that when lives are less than three, let's say, then we have a game over screen. Um, so let's see, should we do that in this video or the next video? 
I just count lives now. And then we'll do the game over screen in a future video. So let's go. Private. In our game scene, private lives. Uh, we'll say three, but we also need to say it in init. So when the game, when the scene restarts, um, it'll call init, but it will not recreate the scene, so your um, variable, your property initial initialization here will not happen again. So this dot lives. So in practice, what that means is when the scene restarts, lives will be whatever, va if, if you don't do this here, lives will be whatever the last value was, which is probably going to be zero. So, so you just make sure you want to reinitialize your variables in the init method. Okay, now when this happens, we want minus minus this dot lives. Okay, so let's real quick here. We're going to add a text. This dot add dot text. We're going to put it at the top corner here. Let's see, ten ten. Text is going to be lives. Um, let's use String interpolation. This dot lives. Uh, we're gonna go with no style for now. Let's just see what this looks like. Ten ten. That is not where I expected ten ten to be. Zero. What if I do zero zero? Miss something here. Font size 24. Now, why exactly? Uh, that's weird. That's not expected. Let's just restart the server. Right now, it's probably not the case. Let's see if there's any errors. Console. Show me the console. Nope. Let's see, dot set origin. I want the origin to be the top of it. And it's still over there. Well, that is very odd. I'm going to do minus 100. Is unexpected if I do set origin half. Hmm. If I do, let's see. Well, something odd is going on. I may have done some, some sort of error here, but I'm not sure what it is. So we'll leave it like this. That's our live, so we're going to want to update this when we lose live. So let's create another class property up here to hold our lives label. Let's call it that. And it's will be phaser dot game objects dot text. And this also, trust me, it exists. This dot lives label. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when this happens, we're going to want this dot lives la lives label dot text equals to lives. This dot lives. Let's just see if that works. Great. One. Zero. And I believe this then would be when you're dead, right? I'll just check. So one. Two. Oh no, when it gets to zero, you're dead. Two. You get three tries. And now you're dead. Okay, now we will implement a game over screen and a 
a windscreen in a later part. That is all for this part. Now in the next part, we are going to add some blocks so that we can break them. This is, after all, breakout.